Okay, to do this problem, we're first going to have to recognize that math and physics don't always align. So the negative sign of a force equation, that's this equation right here for electrostatics, If this happens to be negative, that means that two charges are going next to each other or going toward each other. And if it's a positive, that means they're going away from each other. In this particular problem, it's not so simple because you have two charges that um, are affecting the third charge. So whether it's going towards or away is irrelevant in this case. What we want to do is establish a universal positive and negative. So we're going to say to the right is positive. So because of that, when I look at the overall net force acting on charge three, and that of course being the sum of the force of charge three because of charge two, plus the force of charge three because of charge one, I also have to look at the direction because I know that one of them is gonna be negative um, and one's gonna be positive. So um, since the first charge is negative with the third charge, and we're looking at the third charge, we know that the third charge is gonna to go to the right because of charge one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put all of these in absolute sign brackets. So whatever happens, these has to be positive. That means that we have complete control over the sign or the sign convention. So because of charge one, charge three is gonna go actually in the positive direction. So we're gonna make this a positive um, and actually ends up being positive. Because of charge two, however, charge three is actually gonna to go towards charge three because of the attraction. So it's gonna be negative. So we're gonna make it negative. Well, luckily for us, this was gonna happen anyway because charge two is a positive and charge three is a negative. So they would actually result in a negative number. Um, so actually, if you didn't do this absolute value sign, you would have been lucky and, and got the signs correct. But it's always good in physics to have complete control over the signs based on the situation. So let's go ahead and uh, start doing this right now by looking at all the nouns. Um, first, I'm going to go ahead and write this back here. Now that we have control of the signs, let's go ahead and uh, put in all the variables. And so the sum of these two parameters are going to equal to the net force that's acting on charge three. This uh, Q3 is given to be negative 4.0 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. Q2 is going to be positive 3.0 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. Q3 Again, negative 4.0 times, I'm gonna go ahead and put E, you know, just so we can get a variety of, um, so we can get a variety of, of notation here. Uh, it's gonna be times 10 to negative six coulombs. And then uh, Q1 is going to be negative 8.0 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. The distance between uh, charge three and charge two is, 0.2 meters and the distance between charge three and charge one is 0.2 plus 0.3 meters as given in the problem so 0.5 meters so doing the calculation this ends up being the following and the second term ends up being Adding these two up together, we become okay, and that's going to be the final answer. If you want to go ahead and do it, uh, get it into the significant figures or the proper significant figures, you'll see that on the original problem there are two significant figures for all the values given. So we're going to go ahead and reduce this down to two significant figures, and there is our answer.